The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour. Why? This is the first day of August. First day of August made new highs in the Dow and the S&P. Therefore, you cannot get a peak D in the monthly charts, until a confirmation that is, until the last day of trading in September. That's the very earliest. So it's the entire month of August. <clears throat> Even if right at this point we started to tank and the S&P went all the way down to uh, from 1702 down to 1650, I don't care what it is. It makes a difference. You have to wait the full month to see if there's a lower high bar. And we've already made the high bar for August. So you're going to have to wait the entire month of September for you will get a confirmation that that was, in fact, a peak D. So remember, in a sense, it is a lagging indicator because it's a confirmation. And what you really want is to get all that information from the nearer term, from the daily to the weekly, then to the monthly. That's how you get hat-trick tops or hat-trick bottoms. So now let's just look at what, what's happening over here. First of all, thank you, Steve, for two great hours. Just great to have you there. A tremendous amount of information and um, technical uh, analysis and just generally fabulous show that gives you parameters and, and all, all sorts of techniques, candles, etc. that Steve looks at. So I recommend people listen from 9 o'clock a.m. in the morning. And I come on 11 o'clock, Monday through Friday, straight off to me. This being Thursday, you got Larry Pesavento, and so he'll I'll probably be looking a lot more towards the commodities and the currencies. This is a very important moment, I think, in that area. So I'm pretty sure that Larry will be looking at those in great detail. Uh, I don't want to, you know, push him to do anything that he doesn't want to do. I'm just saying, that's normally what he would do on a Thursday. And the other thing here that is very important is that we have a full day. Thursday goes all the way from 9 o'clock without a break all the way to 6 o'clock. So then straight after Larry, you've got Daryl Martin, then you've got Dave White, and you've got Andy Hecht. Andy Hecht has a, a, a new uh, newsletter. Check it out. And then, of course, Tom O'Brien, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Tom goes through all the different uh, machinations, uh, different uh, uh, ways of looking at the market that he has in these particular techniques. So just very informative. Stay tuned. Um, now, we've got the Dow. Let's just do this. I, I, I've always got this chart up here, so I'm going to talk about it right away. Why? Because this was the clue that when I'd spoken about a rogue wave to the upside, even though the Dow and the S&P had given a signal <clears throat> um, that there should be a pullback, the fact that the MACD was holding well and the stochastic was holding well said there could be that isolated event. And um, But at the same time, I also spoke about the Qs being in leg C and the E minis being in alternate count C or D. But either way, it looked to me like there should be at least one more pop-up to a new high, which we've gotten today. So I'm going to extrude the monthly, the weekly and the monthly just for a moment on this particular chart. I'm going to show the 120-minute chart, which has gone to leg E. And it's saying, hey, the MACD is still good at 86%. The, the MACD is still good. The stochastic's at 86%. Be a little bit careful only because there are signs that there could be a little bit of a pullback, but the day is still young. These 120-minute charts, I'm not going to push the envelope. I am going to say what I want quickly to do, made a big fuss about this for a long time, is that the volatility index, which is down only 51 at uh, 3, uh, minus 3.79% 3 at 1294, has not gone to a new low below 1207, even though... The S&P futures, which is the the way the mechanism for this particular trading vehicle, uh, it's looking at uh, the uh, the uh, volatility in the in the futures contracts near, near term near month futures, and that's saying right now that there's a divergence, a divergence that we should respect. In the 120-minute chart of the VIX, it's gone to A, B, C, D, E, P, E. 
and it's pulling back in that arch formation. So far, the arch formation says, yep, got to be a little bit careful here in terms of it not having dropped further. Uh, I'm going to wait before I can put the down arrow over there. And that says to me that I still believe that we are getting very close to some kind of a pullback. I know, as I said yesterday, I don't know whether it's just a few percent, whether it's going to be a deeper pullback. But I am also saying that in the down, let's just go right there at this very moment. I just want to move this away so that I can see that you're looking at the charts the way I am. If you're looking on smaller devices rather than in the large screen, look at this. I N D. The Dow has spiked up. There's only one count that I can give it right now, and it's F slash A, possible A, but I'm going to go with F for now. F is, <laughs> is be very careful because the candle that forms after this right arm extension, in this case it's really a rogue wave because none of the technicals have really confirmed the rally, says that within two days, if there is a pullback, and for I don't care what the reason is, if there is a spike, it doesn't have to even close, but a spike, spike below 15,500 on the Dow. That's only 124 points away. The Dow is up 121 points right now at 15,621. Have you made a new recovery high and all-time high at 15,650.69? I don't want to fight anything here. Um, in my opening call, we were short. We got stopped out of the S&P, uh, a small, very small percentage. Hey, but, uh, you know, the wrong is wrong, actually. That reminded me immediately of a cartoon that I drew years ago. Here it is. Let me see if it comes out nicely here. Um, this is, there's a guy standing, for those of you who are not looking at uh, Tiger TV. Oh, you're missing something. The guy standing in the water of the ocean, he says, I'm sure the tide is going out. And he's looking kind of coy and everything. And the next minute, ka-splash! There's this huge wave, and he just goes tumbling, tumbling. And he looks up, and, he, and he's lying in the sand there, absolutely uh, soaked. And he looks up, and he's mind. And then the little balloon says, never short the ocean. And this is like a tide. This is like this is from my CD introducing the Chapman Wave. Uh, um, methodology and um, oh, uh, good question there. My um, uh, producer asked, "Did he lose his chunks?" And all I can say is that when the tide is strong enough and you don't tighten your belt enough, you can lose on those shorts. So uh, you got to watch it. Okay, so enough with that. And uh, what I do want to say is that I'm going to go to the Dow right now. The 120-minute chart has gone to an ABC, and it's in leg D. Just nominally above the 15,604, 15,650. I say nominally. It sounds like a lot, 45 points. But, you know, when we're looking at um, 15,620 right at this particular point, it's really not much. It's just a blink of an eye. But what I am looking at is that the stochastic in the in the in the 120 minute chart is very negative. The MACD is turned slightly positive. It hasn't got a big wide beta. You remember the beta? You looked over there, where the fast moving average crosses decisively over the slow moving average. If ever you wanted a tool, these are the things that I teach in my master trader series. If ever you wanted a tool, the expanding on the downside or the upside between the nine period exponential moving average differential and the slow moving average that gives you your momentum remember the the stochastic gives you the torque putting it into first gear second gear etc the MACD is the momentum that's where if you are looking at uh, where it goes into overdrive and we went into overdrive uh, just recently and um, but now the technicals are not confirming very well. That doesn't mean to say they can't catch up and then challenge new highs as they start to improve. But right at this particular point, there is a divergence, and the divergence goes like this. If you look at the highs made at peak E, and you look at the, the level that we're at now, there's no peaks. So I'm putting this in just as a demonstration. If you look at this line here and you want to do some analysis, then you've got to say to yourself, there's divergence. The price has gone up to new highs. 
the MACDs pulling back, stochastics way down to 71%. So I'm a little wary. And as a result, I have no choice but to do what we normally do um, only at this particular moment. And that's to consider the short side, which we've done. And so let, let's get on with it. The weekly chart is E slash A. The monthly chart has just extended leg D into uh, 34.50 into August. And as I said before, you cannot get a peak D until, and that's a confirmation of a peak D, until there's a lower high bar, which means you have to wait all of September, because even on the, we saw that once in June, right at the last day or two, there was an incredible move to the upside, and it extended the monthly. Well, you, it could happen the same thing here. In September, we could be pulling back, and then the last two days or so could spiral higher and extend that D. If there's no new high in the entire month of September, above whatever the August high is, and we're into that zone that I've talked about before, that is a very, very delicate zone. That's where the price has always been repelled. So that's enough with that. Let's go on. We're going to talk about the S&P, the S&P right now, SPX.X. Let me just do this quickly. In leg D, extended as well. Um, into the uh, into August, so that means you've got to wait until the whole month of September before you get a confirmation or non-confirmation. But in this particular instance, the chart that I'm going to show you is here. No, the chart is chart has disappeared. I'll find it. But there's a long-term trend line, and that's the trend line we've got to respect. So at this particular point, the S and P's up 16.12 at uh, 17.01. Point eighty nine made a new recovery high and all time high today at uh, sixteen uh, seventeen oh four point ninety seven. Let's go on. Now this is really important. The cues, you know, I don't look at the composite that much. Yeah, it's it's the bigger one, it's the major one, but the NDX is really the vehicle, and the QQQs are based. The trust series is based on the Q on the uh, NDX one hundred, and that's what I'm going to look at. It's at seventy six thirty right now. It's making a maybe a doji candle, but this is leg C. And I have to count it as leg C, and the MACD did not cross negative. Stochastic's at 83%. So once again, let me just do this. And these are just warning signs. It's not to say you've got to immediately go to the other side. But when you see this, you've got to respect it and say, hey, there is a divergence here, and unless the technicals can, can continue, uh, can improve to work in concert, we will then have a discrepancy that should resolve itself um, by one of the, either the price or the technicals uh, coming together in the, in, in the same direction, and we'll see which one it's going to be. Now, that's, that's that. And it broke out. The NASDAQ, the Qs have broken out decisively in the monthly chart. The weekly chart has just barely broken out of its that trend line, that, that inside track. So that's that. Let me just quickly run the numbers, and then we'll take calls at 877-927-6648. Uh, gold is up 220 at 1350. Silver is up 0.06 at 19.60. Platinum is up. High-grade copper is up big. It's up 3.17, uh, 3 up 5. Crude oil is up 2, and bonds are down a dollar and a half. I'll be back in there. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Day Edition. Sack was bonds that were down dollar uh, one, one in 10, 30 seconds at 132.24. And the, and the dollar was up 0.70. We've got to go through those things. But I, I needed to do a couple of things. A number of email questions and other questions, uh, 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 I am messages. Uh, first one was, I was asked about um, Bank of America. So let me just put this down here. This is the XIV. All right, here we go. Bank of America is BAC. And BAC is acting very well right now. It's going for a potential test of the most recent recovery high. And that recent recovery high was the Doji high of 15.03 on the 23rd of July. Um, I'm going to suggest that if you are long, Stay long, because I think that the bank sector is still a very favorable sector. It might be getting a little toppy here. I'm talking about if this is a, pos a position play that is, say, longer term, then um, <clears throat> and you've held it for a while, I wouldn't want to change your, your strategy any, any bit at all. <clears throat> and the reason is, even though it's leg D in the, in the week, monthly leg E with a doji candle from last week, in the weekly chart, the stochastics at 91 in the weekly, 91 in the in the monthly. MACD is improving. It, the daily has had a fabulous move up. <clears throat> it does need a little bit of a rest. And if it came back to 13.50 to 13 dollars, no big deal if you're in for the longer term. But going through it right now, I'm going to be watching very closely because if it goes to 15 between 15 dollars, 15.03 was the high. 
1506 would be a breakout with holding at 1506. I'd have to watch the stochastic and MACD very closely because there's a pattern in my CD introducing the Chaffin Wave methodology that I talk about. I talk about it very often. I I call it the double top formation or the nickname that we have uh, for for it. Uh, those Chapman wavers is the drop bucket, and it's that pattern that has two p parallel highs, and it could be a little below, a little above. It's like the lowercase h but upside down. The implications are a little bit different. But the most important thing is if it pulls back from that left side lip more than one third to a half, there's a real good chance it's going to test the cup base. If it breaks the base, you've got to be watching out for a one to one pullback. But even then, it still takes you down to that 1350, maybe 1320 level. So I like it. Now, if you're thinking about getting in, this is your most risky entry point. Why? Because you've only got another 10, 12 cents maybe, and then it gets the big test. Well, of course, it could break out, but this is where it's risky. So I'm going to advise you, if you aren't in it, to get in right now, I would, I would only start a very small position saying to yourself, there's a really good chance that if it starts to slide, it could go down about um, a point, even a point and a half, if the general market comes down. If not, you're in, and it starts to break out and hold, then you can even add to it. So that's my recommendation. Got in early, hold it. Don't even think about it. The 200 premium moving average at 1358 is going to be tested at some point, but it's starting to make that a base. And looking out, I think that's important. That was number one. Number two is V. I got an email from a subscriber saying, um, uh, made a round number high. Yeah, I saw that round number high. 196 round number high, gapped up to peak D. So many stocks have gapped up on earnings news to uh, um, leg D. Well, the stochastic and MACD were very poor. And, you know, I was just about to put a short on for my subscribers. And then I looked at MA. Because they've been traveling together, and MA was also giving me the same kind of thing, except that the weekly chart of MA had held the nine-period exponential moving average so well that I, I just chickened out. I said, you know, I, do I really want to short that? And MA is up at 600. It was up at 608, I think, at the, or 603 at the time. I, thought, I, I got better stocks to look at, much lower price, giving the same percentage. So, yeah, round number high. It's, a, it's a, a peak D in the daily, a peak F in the weekly, and it could be a peak F in the monthly, and that would say, be careful, Visa could be in for a tough time over the next uh, quite a few weeks, maybe even a couple of months, especially if 167, the nine-period exponential moving average is taken out. Next question I had was, um, you know, I've been looking at these stocks. Yelp, I, I don't go to Yelp very often, but I do go to it. So I'm saying to myself, you know what? All the the youth consumer friendly stocks are doing really well. Facebook suddenly come alive. Um, you've got um, Zillow. Zillow spikes up today in an alternative wave count. This has to be leg C. I thought it would be a D, but it's not. It's leg C. And leg E in the weekly chart, but it's leg E in the monthly chart. This is fantastic. To go from an IPO to 21.22 from the opening round number 60 uh, monthly high, and then to scream up to 83, that is fantastic action. So we've got a couple of other calls. We've got a, a call on UVXY. We're going to look at the VIX index in much closer detail. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dallas up 125. Not that great when you think about the S&P is up 16. I'll be right back. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals and then specific trade recommendations including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is, I've uh, got a couple of questions. Uh, one is CMC, which is commercial met metals. I'm going to look at that. I'll look at it right now. I'm going to go back to that volatility index in a moment. But I just want to look at this because it just spiked up. I don't know if there was earnings news today, but it spiked up to leg E. The MACD is giving that second M formation, that's going to be very important. Stochastics under 80%, 79%. Uh, if you're in it and you're long, I'm saying, going to say congratulations. Stay in that position. Make sure that um, if it starts to pull back underneath 15.74, you might be prepared for it to go all the way back to test the low of 15.30, the low of the 30th of July. So so far, it's the weekly chart that I'm looking at because the MACD is, has just crossed positive. That, to me, is an important factor. But the stochastics is only at 65%. And then the wick of the candle of the 24th of May, CMC is, in fact, uh, commercial metals trading at $15.93, up 44 The wick, if it gets, I always say, if it gets into the middle part of a wick like that, it should try to test the top. Well, it's trying to do that now, and that would take to 16.19. So my recommendation is uh, uh, CMC, let's see, where are you? Can you look? It just says, can you look at it? I don't know if you're long or what, what the position is. I'm su suspecting that at $15.95, you're actually long. If you're long, I'm going to say just hold it. I think that was, if you were long from a little earlier, that's great positioning. Why? Because it's walking the nine period moving average. The MACD is strong. There's nothing here that's negative in the daily. The weekly chart, nothing about the price is negative. 
But, you know, I always talk about the weekly chart as if it was a sandwich. What does that mean? It means that when there is a sharp pullback, as there was back in the uh, May time frame, uh, sorry, February time frame, all the way from the 17, 15, 1734 area down to the uh, 1333, it impacts the weekly chart the most. The MACD in the in the monthly doesn't even know it happened. It's just I love that it does in the stochastic, but the MACD fast moving average, that's your look back benchmark. That nine period differential, I put a lot of import into it. That's why I had to be prepared and tighten stops on any short positions going into the last two days because I said the Dow could have. Let me just show you the chart. The Dow could have a spiral to the upside. The action today is very unusual, and that's because I think China said that things are actually much better. Who knows about China, but that's what they've said. And the fact that the MACD didn't make a very big uh, differential between that green line and the red line in the daily says that there's still residual strength. So that's why we're looking at that candle. What happens in the next two, three days is going to be absolutely imperative. So let me go back to this chart to explain to you what I'm looking at. I like the fact that you're in down below 14. That's very important. Why? Because it says that there could be, I'm going to draw this in, there could be based on, look at this, how many times you get this. Um, I'm putting in the up arrow. I don't even know. I'm just doing it arbitrarily. A, B, C, D. I, if I had to count in just even the last three months, how many times we've seen charts go to A, peak A, peak B, peak C, and peak D, just that alone is just it's unbelievable how th that discovery that I made so many years ago, and then all the refinements I've made, it just it, it just knocks me out every time. So now it's coming back, and the whole thing is, how does it surpass 1619 that had a round number 16 open? I always look at that. A lot of charts are doing that, plus a, a sign and doji candle. That's what I, I taught in that webinar on, the, on the, my sign and signals back a, a, a year or so ago in my webinar. And that's really important. Can it close above 1619? That's going to be important. So on a short-term basis, you've got to expect that there could be a little bit of a pullback. I like it. And all I'm going to say to you is be prepared that there could be, I'm going to draw it in right now, an oval, not a, not a rectangle, but an oval, which would be very positive, oval pattern coming in. That's what I call the stalk leg formation. And how it handles the 1551 support is going to be very important. So congratulations, you're in it. Stay in it. I wouldn't add right now, but I'd start looking to add if it can hold really well between 1552 and 1538. That's that. Now, the next thing was, when a Victor had asked about UVXY. So UVXY is based on the volatility index. That's the trading vehicle. It's made a multi-month multi, multi -month low at 3538. That's not the issue. Now, let's look at the one that I've been looking at for a while. XIV. It took me a little while, and finally I said, wait, I used to have the inverse of the VIX. I've got to find it. And this is the VS inverse VIX short term. So I think it's one-to-one. -one. Most Basically, it's in leg F slash B right now. It could have been an instant restart, but the MACD is stretched a little bit. It's still good, but it's getting a little stretched. On balance volume, says, whoa, you're getting to an area. You've got to be careful. It could flatten out. But if it reverses from here, that's going to be negative. And if I had to do this, you'd see something quite remarkable. And every new high from peak C to where we are today, you'll see that the MACDs acted very well, but the slow stochastic has been making slightly lower lows. Not negative because it's a 92%, but a warning to say upside momentum in the stochastic is fading. So what would I do? I would look at the XIV, trading at 27.75. If in the next two days <clears throat> there is a move either to, it's at 27.75, if there's a move to 28.13 or higher, I'd say, whoa, be very careful. You've got to wait. You've got to wait for a turnaround in the volatility index, and then you can start a position in the UVXY. But you could start it sooner. If there's a gap down tomorrow morning, and the UVX goes to, it's at 27.75. If it breaks under 27.24 tomorrow on a gap down, then you've got to get the gap down. Or at least it's got to, it's got to maybe pop just a fraction, and then it's got to immediately start coming down. And the Dow has to be minus 85 to 95. The S&P has to be minus 10 to minus 12. Those are the conditions. That would be perfect. 
you you wouldn't get the very best price because it'll happen pre-market, but that's where I'd start entering. And I'd have a, it's a small position. I wouldn't add to it. Let it settle down because that would be the first signal that I've had, especially if this is a doji candle, of some kind of inflection point that can reverse course in the volatility index. Now, here's the interesting thing. If I look at the VIX, the VIX has not gone below 1207, and it should certainly be. The Dow is decisively higher than it was on the 23rd of, of July. Right, let's, go, let's talk about the, um, the S&P, because the S&P is based on the futures on the S&P. So the S&P, uh, let me just find the S&P right here, on the 23rd, 23rd, 23rd hit 1698. It's now at 1703. So it's up five points. And the volatility index, in fact, hasn't gone to a new low. So that's going to be very important to me. So I'm watching it. I'm watching it real closely. <clears throat> the weekly chart says, <clears throat> the stochastic from the daily is going to be really, really important because if the stochastic at 47% can go to 53 to 55% tomorrow or Monday, on some kind of a market reversal, that'll be the very, very first time. Now, what I love to do, <coughs> excuse me, what I love to do is to go to, I'm going to, you know, I'll use the next break to do it. I want to, if I have a chance, I'm going to do like I do here. Um, I very often do this. And if you're a trader, it's very important, actually, sometimes to put the two, the inverse together. Look, here's the DOG. And here's that's 100% short the Dow, making a new uh, a new um, multi-year low. And here's the Dow making a multi-year high. But you can see that the move to the upside is starting to slow down. It isn't like that speedy move to the upside that you saw back going into the high of May the 22nd, 23rd, and the low in the, in the DOG. So I like to put these together, and that's peak A. I believe it was peak... Uh, yeah, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D in the, in the, on the upside and went to A, B, C, D on the downside. I like to get that. I love to look at those inverse actions and reactions. Why? Because it, it, some of you, I, I know I talk about this a lot when I do my Master Trader series. I don't talk about it all that often here, but I'm going to suggest that some of you have a really good eye for buying. And some of you are just, I know it, are fantastic at the short side. I don't even know how sometimes you see it on the short side, but you're just really good at it. So when you've got two charts of the same route and you are visually able to identify the action on the upside better than the downside or the downside better than the upside, when you've got the two together, it gives you added incentive and added uh, uh, a backup to be able to confirm the different moves. So that's that. So that, that, that's my answer to the um, UVXY. You know, you could even nibble here if you want to nibble, but they move so quickly. Um, I, I, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm going to admit, I, this is completely wrong. If the Dow closes up in the 16,000, uh, above 16,050, somewhere around 16, sorry, 15,650s to the 15,690s, I'm just going to have to say, you know, we could even recycle and, and we can go higher. I, I, I'm just... We, in my, in my opening call, we have longs, we have shorts. It's as simple as that. I'm very strict with my rules. We miss buying, uh, adding to a stock that we've had a fantastic gain in by one penny the other day, and today it's up 5%. Uh, you know, it happens. This is just the way it is. But it doesn't matter. You've got to stick with your rules. So um, mixed portfolio, long and short, that's, that's fine with me. Um, you know, the, the longs are so far doing nicely. And uh, we'll just deal with, uh, you know, in the short side, how that happens and how it unfolds. We'll see what happens. So now let's go back to what I was looking at before. I, I wanted to talk about the spike up to the leg D. Look at this. We've got Cray today. Cray, uh, it's a computer company, one of the great computer companies. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. This is leg D on news. Look at that power move at 26.66, leg C in the weekly and leg D in the monthly. And, uh, oh, man, I, you know, I looked at this. I was, when it was down there, I said it's going to make D in the, in the monthly. Could have got it down in the 19s and now it's at 26.67. That's the way it is. But 
That's a spike up on news. Must have had earnings today. Look at MET. MET. You know that peak D. Spikes to peak D. Um, MetLife Inc. at 50.71, up 2.29. But it's leg C in the alternate wave count. Leg C in the weekly is still very strong. Leg C in the monthly with a U-shaped pattern. New high. It's not an all-time high, is it? No, it's not an all-time high. All-time high was back in 2007, October at 71.23. Whoa, it's quite a way down. So um, I went all the way to 24. Some of the stocks really got hammered. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. And even more important than that, I wanted to look at, um, I wrote it down, wrote it down. Uh, yep, that, 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 that. Oh, Z, Zillow. Look, all to do with real estate. Spikes up. I don't know if this is going to be G. I'm calling it leg C for now. So that's not a D, but that's a C. But it spikes up to an all-time high. I think I spoke about this leg E in the weekly, leg E in the monthly, Zillow. So uh, here's another one. TSRX. TSRX is uh, uh, tr is this Trulia? Trius. Oh, therapeutics. <laughs> oh, wrong one. So this is peak A. Is that a B? C, is that a D? Oh, my goodness. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, it's A, B. Spikes up to D on news yesterday. Just by accident, we got that one uh, right here. T -R -T -S -R -X. Let me write that down. T-S-R-X. T-S-R-X. Um, that wasn't the one that I wanted to look at. It's T-R-L-A. Trulia. Right. Sure, my wife looks at Trulia all the time. T-R-L-A. Yeah, that's it. Spikes up and it goes to, this is going to have to be called leg C with news. So you've got some interesting things. Leg D in the weekly chart. Leg only B in the monthly chart. Oh, man, I tell you, anything to do with real estate, it's really, uh, it's really uh, on fire, as uh, Mike says in the debt. So I, I needed just to look at that. And then I had one quick question in um, an email. Oh, could I look at IWM? Sure I can. IWM. IWM right now. This is going to be very interesting because the IWM has made a U-shaped formation. It's going to, I'm calling this leg E right now, all-time high. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say all-time high. It is, in fact, an all-time high. Um, at, oh, of course it's an all-time high. It made an all-time high before any of the other indices. Leg E up in the monthly. E up in the weekly. And we've got E up in the daily. So you can see, I, I had every reason to say that the upside could be limited. And even now, as I'm looking at it, if I'm looking at the Dow from the high of uh, 15,064, you're only at 15,626. It is limited. And there was a reason for it. There's a particular moving average that I've been using that crossed negatively above the nine-period exponential moving average. And that's saying... Upside should be limited until I go back down under the 9 EMA again. Um, getting way over the, um, I need to, uh, Mike asks, isn't the IWM way above the mean? You know, yeah, in the weekly chart, the 101.36 uh, area is um, the 9 period exponential moving average is at 105.10. But we've seen stocks and indexes, look, look at the monthly, it hasn't even come close to the 9 EMA. So I don't want to get in the way of that. So when we get back, I said I would look at, actually when I get back, I'm going to look at the dollar, I'm going to look at the euro, I'm going to look at the uh, USD JPY. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 125. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN.
Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. I had a question. Uh, uh, Bob asked, is there, a, uh, uh, is there a maximum number of bars to form the arch portion of the dreaded H? No, there is not. It can be very short. It can be very long. It is the pattern that unfolds together with how the MACD and stochastic are moving, as well as those three criteria. Does it close above and then move higher? Does it touch and not break, or does it break? Actually, four things. Does it break and then close above, or does it break and close below? And that's almost the same as you're looking at the upside. So let me just, we've got a brief moment here. I know that it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure Larry's going to cover some really important um, um, characteristics that he looks for in, in the stock patterns and the chart patterns and the commodities. So I'm going to just briefly do this. I, I'm showing Aflac. Aflac came out, I think came out with earnings. I missed the duck. The duck is ill. Uh, it's a pity. Can you mention that they've had in, in China, in Japan alone, that duck was really a, a fantastic commercial that produced incredible earnings for them. And where is it? It's at all-time highs, almost all-time highs right now. Previous high was back at uh, 68.81. Now it's in leg D in the monthly chart, doing very well. Leg E and very strong in the weekly. And it's made, this is going to be interesting because the it's made another peak E in and leg E in the uh, daily and normally at DOE, that's where it turns. So we're going to be ups, ups, arrows upside down. That's where we're going to watch it closely. Now look at this, USDJPY. I wanted to show a couple of things here. Um, has a very strong candle. It had that H form formation. You remember what I was talking about yesterday? I said the way it's looking right now, if it doesn't, with a candle, the 
three dojis that were forming, if it closed underneath, decisively underneath the 97.57, I think 97.30 area, that means it's going to go down, and then the next level to watch for would be 96.95. But, in fact, it's a very strong candle today, but it's so far just a bounce. That's all we can call it. But that weekly chart is the one that has the H formation. That's the reason why I'm saying if it at all closes under 97.30, right now it's at 99.30, that's going to be a big negative. Holding quite nicely so far today. So put that together with the dollar DXY. Nice candle today. Um, leg A, could it be a single leg A up? I don't see terribly much strength right at this particular moment. If the dollar starts to climb into the 8250s, it's at 82.60 in the index right now, and closes tomorrow above 82.52 is the 9 period moving average, but 82.65. That'll say, good, now the dollar can have. But the EUR, USD, has made a peak C. We spoke about that as well. I would not be surprised, based on the stochastic and the MACD, to see that the euro have one more attempt to make a new recovery high above 1.33439 leg D. And that would correspond to a number of things. Because I'm looking at the TLT and I'm saying, hey, TLT, you are back at 105.76. This is the 20-year T-bond fund. That's the level I've been looking at for a long time. Major support. So we've got to watch that. That's going to be really important. And then I want to put this really quickly together. I spoke about Hertz, which we were long and made fabulous gains on. Took profits. I wanted to short it at that PD. I just, I don't know why. I, I, anyway, so it's gone from 2775 to 2447. And this was the leader of the pack, Hertz Global. The monthly, ch the weekly chart says, uh oh, look out, it could go back to 22. And it's peak C in the weekly, ch a monthly chart. So that's looking out positive. But I put it together with Elmo, which is ALG, I believe, ALG. And ALG had a pop up and now it's coming back down. If the rental companies are having a tough time, that's going to be a heads up because they were the heads up on the way up. You see the up channel on the weekly chart? Go into the sell zone. Now it's going to be tested ALG at 40.88. The most important thing, can it hold 39.30? 39, 30, 39, let's call it. If it doesn't, it's going to be a probable peak F in the monthly chart, Alamo rental. And Carl, do that as we're going out. I'm going to hand it over to Larry Presavento. I haven't finished that. There's an ABCD in the daily, pulling back and a watch CAR Ava budget group closely. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call, the daily newsletter, front page of TFM. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.